Fight Planet. Hi, flying solo on the Fight Planet this week. Let's get right to it. Saddam Ali, how does he win this fight? I think, maybe, by knockout. Well, against Perez, here's Perez. Taller, longer, uses that jab, but a little slow in the retrieval, leaves himself open a little bit for right-hand counters, chin up in the air, and doesn't always fight tall. Jabs from a little too close. Opportunity for Saddam Ali, counter with the right hand. He does this, bang, right over with the right hand, or Saddam could go down low. When he's jabbing, he feels safe. He doesn't think anything's down there, wrong. Bang, right up top. Saddam Ali does that, knockout, Ali. All right, now how does Perez put off what would be a big upset against Ali? We talked about Ali landing right hands against Perez to win the fight. Well, you can say the same here. There's opportunities, I think, for Perez to land right hands against Ali. Ali has had problems in the past getting hit with right hands. Here's the reason why. Well, spreads his feet out, keeps too much weight. His center of gravity is on his back foot. So when he throws his right hand, watch what happens. He's got to shift his weight forward, and then he's got to come back to center himself again. Well, when he does that and he goes back, well, Perez, be ready. Bang! Go right with him. If he does that, big, big upset. All right, everybody, here at the Casino del Sol in Tucson, Arizona, is ready to take a dip into the ring for our main event as Saddam Ali, who blasted Jorge Silva last time out on January 28th, been training for two and a half months. Is ready to take on three-time world titleist Joan Perez, who will be fighting in the U.S. for the sixth time as a pro. Don't miss it. Be right back. Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN is presented by Tecate, born bold. And everyone is waiting for Saddam Ali to make his way into the ring. And we know that as fight fans, every single one of us is that moment that made us fall in love with the sport of boxing. Tonight's headliner is no exception. And as, as we take a closer look at Saddam Ali, he tells us how he knew boxing would become his calling in life. Around six, seven, eight, I was watching Prince Nassim Ahmed tapes with my dad, the family, pushed the couch up. And he just made it look fun, man. He didn't make it look like two people punching each other in the face. He'll come out dancing. He'll just always be smiling in the ring. He'll make it look fun. So it's something I wanted to do. Yeah, I wanted to make the Olympics so bad and uh, make history as well, being the first Arab American to ever represent the United States in the Olympics. Uh, I was counted out by a lot of people. And I just wanted to make a point that I could do it. And I shocked a lot of people. Um, I beat some good fighters uh, to get to where I was, and um, it was amazing. My world title fight, you know, is what everybody waits for, what everybody wants. It's what's going to take you to the next level, which was so important to me. But um, I fell short. Um, I felt I could have won. There were some big mistakes I made in that ring. Um, set me back, set me back really far. Um, so I got, I got to work my way back up. Um, I let go of something golden um, that I felt could have been mine. Uh, it's just a few mistakes I needed to work on, and I feel like a lot of people have bumps in their road that they need to get through, and um, this is just something I really need to get through. This fight is very important for me because it's my next step, and, and I feel like every fight is going to be that way from now going on. Um, this guy is coming in hungry. He's not just coming in to lose. This, he's probably feeling like, hey, this is my only shot should have seen him at the wings. He was nose to nose, just all in my face, which I don't like, you know? When, we, when we're about to fight, oh, come at me. But at the wings, I don't know, I don't really like when somebody tries to like intimidate me. You know, I don't fear no one but God. And um, it just it made me laugh a little bit, but um, I didn't like it. So that's not good for him. And the smiles are erased off of both Saddam Ali and his opponent, Joe, on Perez's face. Ali told us that he feels this is a big fight for him, that he not only wants to have his hand raised tonight, he wants to look impressive. And to do that, we'll take a look at the Tecate tail of the tape. The reach advantage is in favor of Saddam Ali. In terms of total rounds, we've got 19 more rounds for Joan Perez. And when you look at the inactivity, Ali has been inactive for 42 more days than the former three-time interim world titleist, Johan 
Perez, both looking to make noise here at 147 pounds as Joe Martinez presents the fighters. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live on ESPN from Casino del Sol here in Tucson, Arizona, it is time for the main event of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing this scheduled for the vacant WBA International Welterweight Championship. Presented by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Showdown Promotions. And sponsored by Tecate Born Bowl and Hennessy Never Stop, Never Settle. Sanctioned by the Pasqua Yaki Tribe Athletic Commission, your three judges appointed at ringside, Steve Sandoval, Rocky Taylor, and Roger Woods. When the bell rings and the action begins inside the ring, referee in charge, Tony Zeno. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Tucson, make some noise if you are ready! Introducing you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black trunks trimmed in gold, he weighed it officially 146 and one half pounds. This veteran of 29 professional bouts has 22 victories, three defeats, four draws with 15 big wins coming by way of knockout, presentando el orgullo de Caracas, Venezuela, el terrible Johan Perez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wears our nation's colors, red, white, and blue. He weighed it officially 147 pounds, and in 25 bouts has 24 victories. One defeat with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Hailing from Brooklyn, New York, here is Saddam, World Kid Ali! Okay, Saddam, Johan. We went over the rules in the dressing room. This is for the WBA International Welterweight title. I expect a good, clean fight. Boxeo limpio. Obey my commands at all times. Obedezqueme todo el tiempo. Protect yourself at all times. Protese todo el tiempo. Toca los guantes, touch gloves. Give him hell at the bell. All right, and that's exactly what Joan Perez wants to do to Saddam Ali. He says, I don't know more about Saddam Ali than I've seen on video, and that's all I know. It's very little, but I will get to know him when we step into the ring. What I do know is that both guys get hit with right hands. <laughs> Let's see who gets hit harder. One thing that we showed the tail of the tape, one thing that doesn't show up there is physicality. Who has the advantage? Who's physically stronger, bigger? Perez, smaller man. For me, Ali has a big advantage of being physically stronger. Perez turned pro, 136 pound, lightweight. Moved up to junior welterweight. He fought most of his fights at. Ali has been a welterweight pretty much his whole career. So let's see if he, Ali being he, can take that physical advantage and put it into play. Talked about his amateur career. About 180 and 20 and 200 amateur bouts. The first. Arab American to represent the United States in an Olympic Games. Very proud of that. Perez has been involved in a lot of head clashes. Matter of fact, he's been cut in four fights and mostly over the left eye. He has scar tissue over that left eye. El Terrible, that's a big name to carry for the Venezuelan in when he steps into the ring. But he said he's been working on being more aggressive for this fight because he expects Ali to look to counter him. Ali throwing whipping shots, but kind of uncharacteristically inaccurate for him. Well, he knows he's the biggest, stronger guy, and in some ways, he's feeling his Wheaties. But you talked about bigger, taller. That's the key for me, for Perez. Don't give up your height. But from what I've seen of Perez, he doesn't always discipline himself that way. He's tall, he's longer in this fight. He needs to fight on the outside. Not allow the physicality of Ali to get into Wait, position on, where it can be used. But again, being taller and longer isn't always what matters. Do you know how to use it? And you can see right there, Perez doesn't know how to use it. 
Flaley with his shots. He's got a two-inch advantage in reach. Does the Yemeni American fighter. Said his father had a vision for him to do something beyond what a lot of his countrymen and a lot of his family members do. He said, they work in the shops. My dad always wanted me to be special. But now I'm trying to do that as a professional fighter after reaching the Olympics. Chess match here in the first round, Teddy. Saddam Ali's trainer was telling me a story about when he was 12 years old and he came into the gym one day and Andre told him, go hit the bag. And he said, no, coach. And he said, okay, then grab those 10-pound weights and give me 500 jumping jacks. Looked to his dad and his dad turned around and said, listen to coach. So eventually they had a great relationship and now you see how far he's come as he lands a nice uppercut. Look, I don't know Perez. He's probably a great kid too, but I know Ali. Terrific human being. That's where you've got to be careful a little bit, Ali. He scored with the left hook, but he showed it coming. Telegraphed it a little bit. And that's the spot. If you start that left hook from a little too far out, you can get caught a straight right hand. So, Teddy, he's wearing white gloves with the dark backdrop. Does that make any difference or is it just a myth where you use black gloves, red gloves, blue gloves, white gloves? As long as they land, baby. It <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> if you're fast enough, they're not going to see them coming anyways, right? Now, this isn't baseball where there's a white backdrop and that white ball coming at you and the hitter gets blinded. He can't see it. A little different. I understand what you're getting at, though, kid. That's why I'm asking you. Thank you. Again, you have a one-dimensional guy in there. That would be Perez. Doesn't know how to use his reach, his height. Stands right in front, comes forward like that. Lands a long right hand there, though, coming forward. But the more dimensional guy, the more diverse guy can do more things, that's Ali. He can come forward, he can box, use the ring. And you saw a moment ago, he looked for that counter left hook. Perez is throwing a lot of straight punches while Saddam Ali is going with those dirt punches. Sometimes Perez can get the best of them. Yeah, straight can beat round. Simple geography right there. Or geometry, I should say. Yeah, I didn't go to school. I wasn't, I wasn't in class when they were teaching that anyway. <laughs> you wouldn't have passed either class, Teddy, so it didn't matter. I get the basic concept of it. <laughs> And again, Perez giving up his height, but having a little success. Why? Just pure aggression, pure passion, pure trying. It's good when it's going good, but it can turn sour in a minute, so. Yeah, if it turns sour, it's gonna be where Ali's gonna turn it sour with a counter punch. a boxing match as a chess match here as round two comes to an end. Who says eating on the run means eating like teenagers who kicked over a vending machine? Is that who we are? No. No, it isn't. Sabra grab and go. Hummus, pretzels, self-respect. Sabra, welcome to the unofficial meal. Jim Beam and Apple have come together to make history. Now try Jim Beam Apple. Pour it over ice and serve with club soda and a fresh lemon wedge to make a crisp, refreshing Jim Beam Apple and soda. I said in the last round, if Ali has good moments, it's going to be off the counter. There's a nice counter right there. Makes a missed jab, and he also gets Perez to give up his height. He slips over, 
counters with that nice little uppercut. There, he's down for the count. Corner wanted to call it a trip, but I'll have to take a look at it. I think it was a counter right hand, to be honest. I don't know how clean it landed, but it looked like a counter right hand by Ali as, again, Perez giving up his height. Now, look, it's great. He's got heart, Perez. And, you know, he's showing passion and aggression. But if you keep doing things wrong and giving up your height and coming forward with a guy like Ali, who's a good counterpuncher, guess what? It's gonna pay. And Barrera was aware exactly of what type of fighter Saddam Ali was. He said in the fighter meetings, I know he's a counterpuncher, I know he's gonna be waiting on me, but I'm still gonna be aggressive. So it's kind of a counterintuitive process of thinking. Be aggressive without coming forward. How about that? Try that on for size. In other words, use an aggressive jab on the outside, but don't give up your height. Don't go into that danger zone. Effective aggressiveness, and once again, he gets countered by the left hook. But he's on him. He said, I'm going to be pressuring Saddam Ali. I know he can't handle my pressure, but he's putting himself in very precarious spots. Well, the, the spots where Ali can be a little vulnerable to pressure is when he goes out. Every once in a while he does that. He goes out on the straight line. I know his trainer, Rozier, doesn't want that. And when he goes out on the straight line, well, hey, the choo-choo train was coming at you on the track. Could you go straight back? No, sir. Laterally. And actually, but, uh, Perez's corner was saying, he's killing you with the lateral movement. So you've got to cut off the ring. That was right before round three started. Normally being very intelligent in these first three rounds. And again, showing them more diversity, can do more things. The one thing that Perez hangs his hat on, hangs his hope on, is being aggressive, being a fighter. Both fighters staying true to who they are. Yohan Perez coming forward. Saddam Ali looking to counter. Yeah, he's looking for that counter. He's looking for that counter look to Saddam. That's his Sunday punch. I think he might have to switch to a Saturday punch. Right hand. Take a look here at the counter punch. You see Ali with the right hand again. Perez reaching in, giving up his height. Looking for a right hand. And the right hand, straight right hand of Ali scored first. I don't know how clean, tough angle to really see that. But definitely that right hand got there quicker than the longer right hand of Perez. You know, he clipped him, and then his weight just took him, the momentum took him forward, and then they clashed, and he caught him with another left hook as he was going down. Reminds me very similar to the knockdown that Eddie Eboy Gomez got on Barrera because of the fact that the opponent went for it and he got clipped on the counter. Hold on, hold on, let him out, let him out. Just not taking a step back in this fight, wanting to pressure Saddam Ali. And once again, continues to land that left hook. Get off his head. Look, the strict definition of a knockdown, where you really don't need interpretation is if a punch lands and the guy goes down, not down. Punch definitely landed. He took his momentum forward, and then whatever happened, happened. And again, it happened on the back end. Correct. Where Ali's mentality, his, his forte, is to take advantage of somebody's reckless aggression. So what's, what's different this fight, Teddy? Because it's working a lot better for Saddam Ali than it was for Eddie Gomez. Is it the recklessness of Perez as opposed to Barrera? Well, Ali is mixing in the jab. You know, I said it. I yes. mean, Gomez, if he had that genie lamp, he would have wished for a jab. There's a clash of heads. I talked about that Watch Perez has been involved in a lot of clash of heads, and it looked Good. like Ali got a nick now over his left eye from that clash of heads. I believe it was a clash. 
left eye. Perez is okay, and it's Saddam Ali. Time in. Box. Major so far. See, that's all you need to know that Perez gets involved in head clashes. That's all you need to know that he doesn't fight tall. Because yes. if he's fighting tall, he never gets involved in a head clash. A little bit of blood trickling down the outside part of Saddam Ali's eyebrow. Not affecting him so far. That could change. Now, do you ask a guy to protect that eye a lot more, Teddy, or is it a position no, where it's not? No, don't, don't put that in his mind where it gets him away from doing the things he needs to do without thinking about the eye. Things that he needs to do to win. Act like a pro, we'll take care of the cut, and go do the things you train to do. Get off his neck. That's why you have a team behind you. Saddam Ali was talking about how happy he is with the people he's got in his corner. You know, Brady gets hit with a blitz, bang, and he gets hit. Does he worry about that blitz coming again? Is he tentative? Is he hesitant about the next pass? No. He figures his lineman, do your job, block, I'm still gonna be who I gotta be. Now fighter with 25 fights under his belt, Saddam Ali understands that. This is the third time that Saddam Ali has cut as a pro. I had lost my five on the ESPN app. So we've got a full week leading up to that, Teddy. It's going to be a lot of great classic fights. So ESPN 2 will be your boxing central. What's that commercial? It's a commercial that's been around. It's right to the point. It says simply the best. Yes, sir. That would be the commercial for Lomachenko. Simply the best. And we're going to let you wax poetic about this young Ukrainians talent later on in the show Teddy this has been shark week next week on ESPN will be boxing week. It's got almost four million people watching the Manny Pacquiao the porn fight hopefully we'll get a good number for Brasil Lomachenko as he's an amazing fighter with superb talent the best fighters in the world back where they belong on free TV Talking about Shark Week, Perez thought he smelled a little blood in the water. Coming forward, aggressive, but you can see right there, Work your way out. Work out. Ali, oh, he was able to swim away from it. Nice one, too, by Saddam Ali. Swimming away from it again. You mentioned the jab, how key that is to you know, fend off an aggressor like Perez, who once again eats the jab coming in. Now he's got to rethink what he's going to do. Again, Perez, very game, very tough. Fighter's mentality, but very one-dimensional. Just coming forward, Chuck and Leather. Ali looking at outboxing. Leather being exchanged there as John Perez looks to land that right hand. Ali looking to counter him. Perez looking to lead and land on the lead. Ali looking to land on the counter. In other words, again, take advantage of mistakes from Perez. He wants Perez to be part of his own demise. Reeling him in, reeling him in, and then if he shortens up on that left hook, it'd be very effective because he's looping it a little bit. I think the right hand could be there. There was a good left hook counter by Ali. I think the right hand again could be there for Ali over that jab of Perez when he throws it with his chin up from too close. Another headbutt it looks like where Perez involved now again. Cut. Now it's the eyelid and that's a bad place for a cut, Teddy, as opposed to the cut that Ali has. Stop, stop. No good place for a cut, but... That is, but we'll have to get a closer look at it. We're halfway through this fight. Hard fought battle between Perez and Ali. GC.
Take a look at the counter left hook by Ali. He puts his right hand over there to block the right hand and then counters with the left hook. Now, beautiful job by Ali, bad job by Perez. He threw the wrong punch. He throws the right hand when Ali's got the right hand over there to block it. Should have threw the left hook. Right. Woulda, shoulda, woulda, Teddy. Inches, baby. As Pacino said in that movie, any given Sunday. Work your way out. An inch this way, an inch that way. It's a victory or defeat. Another headbutt between these two fighters, and Juan Perez complains, but he's partially to blame. I think he's all to blame. <laughs> Again, all you need to do is see a taller, longer guy on the inside. That's why he's involved in that heaping and Perez in so many Don Head clashes. And he's bleeding over that left eye I talked about, where Perez has been cut in four fights. He's got scar tissue there. It's a vulnerable area. It's open once again. I'm not sure he doesn't have two cuts, one on the eyelid and one on the outside part of the eye. Well, that's one case where two is not better than one. <laughs> you see Saddam Ali going to tee off here in round six. What you saw there was a good exhibition of defense by Ali. Just being the better strategist, being the better fighter in that spot, making a miss and then catching him off the rebound. Andre Rosen telling Saddam Ali, I like that uppercut as he sees that Joan Perez leans in. See if he listens. This left hook to the body. Joan Perez, very little of that so far in this fight, Teddy. Most, mostly head hunting from both guys. Yeah, I would agree. Big right lead from Saddam Ali. I'm not sure it landed, but it made noise. <laughs> well, if the judges saw it the way I saw it, then that's good for him. That's a problem sometimes in this business, right? He just touched on it. Three different perspectives, though. Maybe two judges saw that, one judge. Throwing punches, and one guy's making a miss and landing. Ali's making a miss, and it spots landing. Decide yourself right now to be special for me. You understand me? We came too far for you not to take care of business. Clean punches. Clean. He's tired tonight. Don't show. Don't give him away what you already gained out of him. He's tired. Keep working that body inside. Stay low. Roll clean. You're rolling forward. And you, you might not see an uppercut, so don't roll forward. Let's get it. Stay sharp. Stay sharp. That was the Hennessy Never Stop, Never Settle corner cam. You got a chance to listen to Andre Rozier give those instructions to Saddam Ali. Don't give anything back, I think, was the big takeaway from that exchange. Time, Time out guys, is called by... your heads. Cuidado con la cabeza. Both of But... He doesn't want any more headbutts. Let's see if they listen. Especially the Venezuelan, Juan Perez. Three-time interim world titleist at 140 pounds now, looking to make some noise at 147. The noise you heard there was a right hand of Saddam Ali landing on Perez. Again, here's a beautiful example of why I got so upset in the Horn Pacquiao decision, where there's no doubt about it. Horn showed a lot of guts, you know, and he showed a lot of punches. But he was missing a lot of punches. You got a guy here, Perez, there's no doubt about it. He's being aggressive. He's throwing a lot of punches, but not effective aggression. They're not landing. That's what boxing is about. Not just throwing, not just being aggressive, but who's more effective? 
the interesting thing about when you watch Saddam Ali, he's very effective on the counter punch, but what he's done in the last two rounds, Teddy, is also be effective in taking the lead with that big right. I still think that's the punch. If there's all of a sudden a spectacular moment in this fight, I believe it may come from the right hand of Ali. I believe that's what you said in the fight. Come on, work you out. Yes, sir. Walk that jab. Andre Rozier is in the corner, and we have a microphone on him. Let's listen. See what his reaction is. You got to touch him, though. He right there to be touched. Touch that body. Body. Saddam, touch that body. Get them legs going. Back on your jab. Back on your jab. Come on, work your way out, guys. Back on that jab. Use the jab, sharp. You waiting too long. You give them time to think. Keep it going. There you go. Quick feet, Saddam. Quick feet. He's loading it up. Quick feet. So, Teddy, the instructions were great. The execution really wasn't there. Yeah, maybe you you might be to a point right now, quite frankly, where Ali is quicker, more agile, more mobile, more dimensional, but maybe he's actually moving too much. Yeah, there's opportunities, kind of like in a basketball game, where a guy's dribbling too much. There's opportunities to put the ball in the basket. Well, we're close to the shot clock. 16 seconds left here in round number seven. Coming down the stretch of our main event tonight here on ESPN2. Don't worry about the ball. Listen, sit down, focus up, let's get shot. Come on, let's go. Saddam Ali having great work done by his cut man on that cut over the left eye. Got to say the same thing about Joan Perez here as round eight gets underway. Nice left hook there. By Saddam Ali. Talk about a guy fighting under control, Teddy. That's one of the things you notice when you see Ali putting in work. Well, he's, he understands where his strengths are, which is counter punching, but he also understands the flaws and weaknesses of his opponent, which is giving up his height and walking into territory where you can counter him. That's two wild misses by Saddam Ali. Once we were talking about him being under control, I really got clipped. Another, another help buddy looking at him. You know, it's funny, Perez complaining about the head push, but again, he's the one falling in with his head. All right. So, Andre Rozier is in the red corner, and Teddy, I'm interested in hearing some trainer talk between you and Dre. Oh, Andre started a great job getting Saddam ready here. I guess you expected this taller, longer Perez to give up his height, and you have Mr. Ali in counter-punching mode. Well, Teddy, I would like to see Saddam use his jab a little bit more, like he just did, but follow through on it. He's throwing the jab, but he's not following through. And he has to shorten up his body shots. Would you also like to see, I mean, it's very obvious that your guy is the more versatile guy, the more dimensional guy, the more agile guy, using movement, keeping Perez off balance. But simply put, it's probably at the point, I would think, where you'd like to see your guy move his hands maybe a little more. Without a doubt, Teddy, I'd like to see him finish up and, and actually put a little bit more pressure on Johan and start to cut the combinations a little bit quicker. He's waiting a little too much, and I'm not happy about that. Yeah, what you're saying, and I agree with you, is that Ali's doing the hard part, making a miss. He needs to start doing the fun part and hitting the guy. Exactly, Teddy. We're on the same page with that one. Make him miss, make him pay. Simple boxing 101. All right, thank you very much, Andre Rose, here for taking time here. As the fight is in progress, a great job, by the way, by the red corner on Saddam Ali's cuts. Does not become an issue as the fight has progressed. That became an issue. Nice right hand there from Joan Perez, who now is on the attack and has Saddam Ali in retreat. Listen, Saddam sees everything coming, making it miss, but this is the problem when you go on defense and you make guys miss, but you don't make them pay enough, which Andre and I were talking about. You allow that fighter to stay in the fight and to get brave, to get aggressive, to have another moment. 
and maybe in a round that you're winning, allow the judges to say, hey, this guy is going after him. He's being aggressive. He may not be effective, but some judges just like the guy go, who's coming go. forward as eight round comes to an end here in Tucson, Arizona. Spending a Sunday like this, bad fantasy. Let's go, you gave that round away. We got two rounds to go. Workshop, stop falling apart. Keep the jab in his face and keep your hands up and keep moving. You hear me? Let's go. Open up. Of course he's gonna come. I would come if I was him too. Don't let him come. But you gotta cut some action loose and shorten it up. You're reaching too much. You're the man, homeboy. You're the man. Let's go. Come on. Wake it up. Stay sharp. So we saw two different voices. One, and Andre Rosier giving the precise instructions, and the other was motivational. Get out there. You're the man. So we'll see if both voices come to fruition here in round number nine as Saddam Ali tries to shorten up his punches Work your way out. and punish Joan Perez for coming in. You know, a couple of rounds ago, I used the basketball analogy. You know, you dribble the ball too much, you know, and you don't put it in the hoop enough, the ball can get stolen. And that's what Perez is trying to do, steal the ball from Ali just by throwing a lot of punches. Ali's dribbling the ball, he's making a miss, sometimes a little too much, and it's given Perez an opportunity to pour that offense on. And try, try to steal moments. And yeah, that was the case in round number eight. In round number nine, a good early start for Juan Perez. As soon as they referee Saino puts time in, he lands a nice left hook. And, and that's the only negative you could really point at Ali tonight. Boxed a good fight, but sometimes moved a little too much when he didn't really have to. He could have sat down, did right there. He could have punched. He had the man Perez missing. That's the hard part. You make a miss. Do the fun part. Make him pay. Again, opportunities to counter. Ali satisfied just making a miss. There, though, he landed a nice right and then a quick left hook. There he comes in with a lunging left hook. That's probably the most dangerous punch he's thrown in terms of exposing himself. But that's where Ali has to be careful when he pulls he loose straight back. If an opponent's aware of that, he can step with him, find paper. Especially when you've got the ropes behind you, that limits how far back you can move. Very true. That's a good point, Bernardo. Good experienced fighters know where they have their opponent. And they take advantage of that. I'm trying to make one good point of fight for him. Oh, you make a lot more than that. Stop! Don't hold it. Go. Fuck. Nice right there by Pettis, but the counter of Ali was almost instantly there for the counter. Again, just not enough punching by Ali. Maybe allowing Perez to steal some rounds just by being aggressive. Let him out, let him out. Step back. has had the same speed come forward the entire fight as round nine is about to come to an end. We will have a barn burner at number 10. Let's listen in to the Hennessy corner cam. Ultimo round. This is the last round. Breathe deep, breathe deep. Walk in a circle. Keep the jab going. It's tough. Don't worry about no heavy exchanges, just box. All right? Keep the round going. That's what I want to see. And don't make mistakes. Listen, don't make mistakes. This is your round. Big round, Papa. He's tired, too. Don't show 15 sprints a day. Pick it up. 
That was the Hennessy corner cam, never stop, never settle, as in the corner of Saddam Ali, they were saying, all those sprints, you did the 15 sprints a day, put them to work. All right, this is round 10. The final round between Joan Perez, a former interim world titleist at 140 pounds, and Saddam Ali, a welterweight contender. Both want to get, make some noise here at 147 pounds, alongside Teddy Alex and Bernardo Osuna. Teddy Johan's coming for him. Yeah, and that's why Ali's getting chances now. He's finally moving his hands when those opportunities are presented. You know, before Ali, the last few rounds, he's probably allowed Perez to steal the rounds. Because Perez has come in, he's missed, but he's the only one throwing. And even if you're missing, if you're the only one throwing, you're gonna win rounds. Ali's doing a better job, at least early here, of making him pay with some counters. See, I, I said it rounds ago that I I just feel I see Ali's advantage athletically, you know, he's more agile, all those things. But he should sit down and just do a little more punching, a little more fight. And you can tell the difference in terms of the power in his punches when he sits down on him and he lands flush. It affects the terrible Perez, but he doesn't do enough of that. More concerned with staying moving laterally. Let him out. Let him out. Again, right there, you saw the intellect, the good technique of Ali making Perez miss, but just not the, the simple part of coming back, which is so obviously important. You see, he makes him miss, and then he ties him up. In the corner. Joan Perez, Miguel Gomez is yelling, chicken, chicken, stop and fight. <laughs> Referring to Ali's consistent movement. Well, you try anything you can to get under someone's skin to get them to do what you want them to do, but that's part of being a pro. You do what you need to do, not what someone else wants you to do. Would have been more effective if you yelled it in English, too. Oh, yeah. He's yelling it in Spanish. Well, I three. Pushed back by Juan Perez. Perez turned to southpaw. That might be his late sign of, I need something. Like a rabbit out of the hat. Desperation here from Juan Perez. And a solid performance from Saddam Ali as the bell strikes for the end of this fight. So Saddam Ali and Johan Perez looking to make that dream of becoming a welterweight champion a reality. One will be a step closer when we return with the official decision from the Casino del Sol. Brought to you by Hennessy. Never stop, never settle. And by Canelo Golovkin, live on pay-per-view September 16th. You can watch it online at ringtv.com. Powered by Fight. Well, I had it 97-92, Ali. All right, that's a good scorecard, Teddy. I've got mine at 96-93 for Saddam Ali. That knockdown obviously will help. What did I say? 97-92, right? Oh, 97-92, okay. Yeah, that's what I had for Ali. All right, so let's take a look at the final punch stats on this fight. As we take a look at the total punches thrown, and it's a 25% rate of landing for Saddam Ali landed 11 punches more and power punches I think that was the biggest difference in terms of the amount thrown and landed by Saddam Ali Joe Martinez is in the center of the ring and he's got the official decision here from Tucson Arizona so Joe Martinez waving to the crowd and we're ready to go ladies and gentlemen after 10 rounds we go to the judges scorecards we have a unanimous decision Rocky Taylor has it 98-91. Steve Sandoval and Roger Woods, both 97-92. All for your winner from Brooklyn, New York. Saddam World Kid Ali! 
When the judges agree with Teddy Atlas, that man smiles on his birthday. When we come back, Saddam Ali will sit with us ringside for a post-fight interview. Don't miss it when we return. Back here at Casino del Sol in Tucson, Arizona, where Saddam Ali earned his 25th victory as a professional. And as promised, now he's here with us ringside. So, Saddam, we talked about in the fighter meetings what you wanted to do in tonight's fight. Ring generalship, speed, precision. How would you grade your performance tonight? Uh, I don't want to be too hard on myself, but honestly, I give myself a six. I, f I felt really off. Um, I wanted to do the ring generalship and do the nice feint to come over to the top and really catch him. Um, he was tough, you know, he kept coming, but I don't grade myself too well in this fight. Uh, I got a lot of things to work on, if I'm being truly honest. Hard grader, Teddy. Yeah, I mean, I got to go home and watch it myself, man, but just well, the way, the way I go. He's an honest fighter. You don't get anywhere in that ring with being a liar. I right. mean, the truth comes to you hard and fast, right. man. If you're not facing the truth, right. it's going to catch you down the road. You're never going to get better if you don't be honest with yourself. What do you think was off? Um, I felt like um, my movement wasn't right. My counterpunches wasn't on point. I was a little slow with certain things. I was getting hit with shots I shouldn't have gotten hit with. Um, a little off balance as well. I just felt really off in there. And Anything not happen happened we don't know about in camp or... Um, you know, coming up to the fight, which can change yeah, things. I don't want to make any excuses. You know, it could be little things like you get in the cold during camp, but I should have still been good. None, none of that should have held me back. Um, yeah, pro man. does what he has to do. I exactly, mean, exactly. I'm, I'm in an agreement with you. And uh, if you don't see your mistakes, you're never going to get better. So I just, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I won. I look great, but it wasn't as good as I expected myself to look, and I got things to work on. Yeah, the one thing that I would say to work on that I talked about, even with your trainer in the corner, when we were talking is that in a lot of spots you were doing the hard part you were making a miss right. but you weren't doing the fun part right you weren't making a pay kind of punch. yeah exactly yeah i was making a miss a lot trying to get him to slow down a little bit but what i should have done was counter punch off but the missing i was doing that would have slowed him down on its own but you see little mistakes like that like you just mentioned yeah is, is what I'm, I'm upset at you know i gotta work on that didn't look right well you go back and you'll work on them 100 percent. i need to and you, i will you were talking about how hard it is to get a title shot at 147 because of all the talent out there. Right. Do you think you did the right things in terms of getting yourself closer to that? Well, I need to, like fights like this, you know, rugged fights like this, you got, this guy's not a great name, but he's really tough, you know, and he's not, he's, it's just, he wants it really bad. You know, he does a, he's not coming here just for the paycheck. So to get to where you want to get, you got to fight guys like that. And you need that experience. You see, I look, if I would have looked like this in any other elite fight, I wouldn't have got the win. That's 100%, and I know that. And that's why I got to go back to the drum board and really work on things in the gym and, and make sure I look like how I want to look. Nothing better than a fighter who can critique himself and then go to work, but that's the winner tonight. His name is Saddam Ali, improves to 25-1 and one as a pro. We look forward to seeing him again. For Teddy Atlas and Bernardo Soon, it's been a pleasure to join you for Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN from Tucson, Arizona. Next week, we have a war. Jesus Soto Caras against Mauricio Herrera. And then Vasil Lomachenko against Miguel Marriaga on back-to-back -back nights. This is the home of boxing, ESPN. And you've got the best in the business, Teddy Atlas, just schooling us every day about the ins and outs of boxing. To all the crew out in Tucson, Arizona, gracias. We'll see you next time.